you for my little serenade. Oh, I've had dreams one of the about most that. Embarrassing things I've ever had to do. Was it? You embarrassed it. I embarrassed you. I felt like a minstrel. <laughs> I actually, I was saying to them, the reason they did that is because I sing out loud yeah, right. to your songs all the time when I'm cooking. Oh, so I shut the door and I turn it. up the, oh. the music yeah, and I nice. just... You've got such a beautiful, soulful voice. <laughs> Thank you. Did you come from a family that... <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> Did you come from a family that listened to soul music? Where's yeah, that? my mum, um, my mum and my dad actually. My mum had like a soul compilation album that was wasn't even a very good one, but it had loads of uh, Fats Domino and sort of Otis Redding, a good mix of Sam Cooke and Marvin Gaye, just all the good soul singers from back in the day. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I always, always associate good voices. you with ballads. You've got that. What the pieces don't fit, and it was such a, yeah. great, great <laughs> songs and such a soulful voice, but. Yeah. You've been quoted as saying that you think you've been sort of because because it's the, of the ballad you you mm. sort of think that's boring. Not no, it's 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 just that um, over time you know it was difficult for me to get away from ballads because all the radio stations were only willing to play stuff that was like that. So even if I tried to step out of the box to do something different, they were still like, no, we want a ballad. So uh, right. it just got really frustrating for me, really, yeah. as an artist. But, well, I um... loved your song, Broken Strings. When I was going through my patch with Kieran, mm. I played that song because I wanted to record it and put it on YouTube, but I knew that um, I wouldn't really do a good version of it, like you said. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, it's amazing. So what do you want to do? If you're not doing ballads, you're going to try and do upbeat. Oh, yeah, I just I tried to get... I tried this time around, I just tried to write songs that still have, like, an honest sort of emotion in there, but uh, a different feeling instead of a ballad. Like, it's a little bit... You know, ballads are kind of when you're a bit quiet and you've got a time to listen and take in and you're in, in your head sort of thinking about things, whereas I wanted stuff to be a little bit more expressive Externally, rather than because she thought that you was rather than like a moaning. Like, yeah, I don't want to. I've never intended to be someone who, who moans in their songs. I always try and do something that you know grabs your emotion and makes you feel empowered, rather than oh, it's all bad mm. and it's all you know. So, uh, but you know, I, I I had a kind of tough time growing up, but at the same time, I think that's why I try to write sweet songs. Is mm. it, it sort of it's the and, and it's the other side of that really, and then I think. Uh, I just yeah this time I just tried to write stuff that felt felt emotional but but musically a little bit more up tempo. You, yeah. you did have a really tough time growing up actually. You didn't have an easy time. Did that help you kind of contribute to your writing process? Was that cathartic for you to put those feelings? Um, into in songs? in the beginning it was difficult to Why write. Why do you keep about laughing them? every time you talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not laughing. <laughs> No, I just, I just get, I just get self-conscious. Um, yeah, I don't. Know, my, my upbringing was, was definitely, uh, it made me who I am. But it was, it's difficult to kind of sum it all up in a song, you know. Mm. So I try and use the sentiment of what I'm saying to kind of sum up all that, really, and mm. not, and not kind of get specific about, uh, you know, what's. I don't want to bring anyone down. And so. you, had to, you had to work really hard before you were discovered. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was playing open mic bars at like. 13, 14, I was busking in the street, I was doing as many gigs as I could do. I was, I was playing uh, the assembly at school as well. Like, I got roped into playing <laughs> assembly. Um, so did, was there a big defining moment? Did someone discover you? Did you yeah, send a the, demo the, the, Yeah, the big moment for me was when I was 18 and I was playing an open mic bar in Derby uh, called Ryan's and it was like a really cool Irish kind of... It's kind of like peanuts on the floor, mm. ale kind of bar. Uh, and I was playing open mic. Your kind of place, Cole. You know. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, I used to get drunk on a tenor in there. It was good. Yeah, and um, yeah, and I was playing that um, week in and week out. And then uh, there was this guy who said he knew someone, and he was just a regular guy who used to drink in the in the pub. So I didn't really listen to what he was saying, to be honest. Uh, and then I kind of followed it up a few weeks later, and the guy who I met ended up becoming my manager, and he worked for. Derby Council setting up music events, and that was kind of my way in then, really. Yeah. But and at that you, point, I still didn't have any songs. You've so. become a dad, haven't you? Yeah. Since we last saw you on, on yeah. this show, Elsie. Yeah. Um, and you've taken quite a bit of time out to spend some yeah. time with her. Is that yeah. is that also a bit to do with your own childhood and wanting to do things yeah. differently? Yeah. <laughs> just I just didn't want to be away from my daughter. You know, like my dad. He he was a good dad in terms of himself as a person, but he wasn't always there. So uh, even though. Uh, I'm more attentive than my dad was to my daughter. I was away a lot still, so I just wanted to be at home enough for her to remember her dad being at home, taking her to school and stuff like that. Um, 
yeah, it was quite important to me that. Mm, fantastic. And she's seven now, is yeah, she? Yeah, she's seven, yeah. And so now you, you're going to go back out gigging again. That's going to yeah. be quite different for yeah. you, isn't it? You're going to miss her. Yeah, well, she's older now, so yeah. I think, you know, she'll exactly be able to... Exactly, your wife wants you out of the house now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I said this yesterday, you, um... oh, they, they asked me about when I go home, and I was like, yeah, it's great going home. And then I thought afterwards, actually, it's better when she likes it more when I'm away. <laughs> Colin's got a little gift for I you. I have got oh, a little yeah? gift to you yes. from somebody who you massively oh, nice. inspired. Santa. <laughs> <laughs> That's now, awesome. have a look in. Have oh, yeah. a look in. Show the people what we've <laughs> <what Ms>. bought. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh nice. That's because amazing. Because you inspired Ed Sheeran That's when he so read good. how you... Got yeah, your that's right. I was that, I was really yeah. lucky to meet him actually. Uh, I was doing a TV show in France, and he's one of the only people who's come up to me and said hello to both mm. my daughter and my and my other half. Yeah, so no one ever does that. Says a lot no. about a person. Yeah, and I just thought, guy. you know what, you're all right.